A consortium of Kenyan and Swedish investors are planning to construct a six billion shilling house project in Ati River. The estate targeting the mid and the lower end of the middle class segment is expected to accommodate 7,000 people. And joining us for more insight into the project, we have Paul Mwai, the CEO of AIB Capital. Thank you, sir, for joining us. It's great to have you on the program. And it seems that no one's really catering for the lower to middle uh, segment of uh, the market in Kenya. And this is interesting because you're coming in with a very different product uh, and perhaps uh, very suited to the low to middle e income uh, market that is very affordable, but at the same time, you're giving a very different quality as well. Tell us about the premise behind this project. Absolutely. I think a lot of developers in, 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 in Kenya have focused on the high end of the market where perhaps uh, there's been more lucrative. But there is perhaps a very huge market uh, at the bottom of the pyramid. There is probably demand, estimated demand of 90,000 units per annum. Uh, if you, and you, when you think about how many are being built uh, on an annual basis, even the latent demand that's left over from year to year is really huge. So there is really uh, very, very heavy demand for housing at that level. And that's where we said uh, we, you know, um, this particular project needed to target at that, particular at that particular market. I think the other projects that have been done at that end of the market have been either government related or, or, or maybe one of the mainly government related. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's just touch on, on the cost of this overall project. Uh, and as we said, um, you know, quite a large chunk uh, is coming through. Uh, 1.6 billion shillings is going to be sourced uh, from uh, banks. Uh, shareholders are going to contribute around 90 million shillings, 3.8 billion shillings raised from the sale of completed house units. So you've actually diversified the way that you're going to be bringing in uh, capital. Um, tell us about the return on equity going forward. And I know that you are looking, as we said, the lower to the um, middle income segment of the uh, uh, housing market, 1.5 million shilling range and capped at 7 million shillings. So it is a fair range that we're looking here relative to the uh, to the debt as well. Yes. yes, the total cost of the project will be close to 6 billion shillings and out of that uh, about 600 million shillings will be financed from equity. Uh, the return on equity on that particular portion is estimated at about 25% uh, given the current projections and again uh, given the, 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 the demand that we have on this area we are confident that we should be able to um, sell, sell off these houses uh, sufficiently quickly. Uh, the remainder, uh, 1.6 will be uh, debt, uh, which will be sought from a consortium of banks. And, and the, the final part will be internally generated funds, which is effectively rolling over uh, one project into uh, one phase into the other uh, and, and, and from pre-sales. So as we said, 7,000 units are going to be available. I know that the target for the lower um, uh, income bracket, you're looking at 1,200 units, which are priced between 1.5 million shillings and around 2.5 million shillings as well. So a fair portion going to sort of the lower um, income segment. Do you think that in Kenya there is going to be appetite to come in and buy property when you've got interest rates that are currently sitting at 18%? Um, obviously, credit is very thin on the ground. What is your view on the overall trend that could come to the fore and how this could impact your prices? Absolutely. Um, I, 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 I think uh, when interest rates rise, the, the first part of the market to get hurt is the high end. So probably you get a bit of a cushion when you're at the low end of the market because you could get sufficient number of houses either being financed either from straight out purchases or part, uh, part cash and part mortgages. Uh, on, on top of that, I think our interest rate outlook, I mean, this is a long-term project. It's a, a four-year project. Uh, we can't focus on the current economic situation, which we believe is short term. We've seen trends where interest rates are coming down. We've seen the T-bill rate come down. And although the central bank hasn't uh, yet reduced the central bank reference rate, uh, I think there are uh, in indicators on inflation um, uh, and other fundamentals uh, leave us confident that going into 2013 we should see yeah. lower interest rates in this market. Um, are you already starting to think of selling some of the property and is there appetite on the ground so thus far or are you going to uh, be focusing on this closer to the uh, end of the deadline as you mentioned in around uh, three to four years time? Yes, uh, I think our focus right now uh, is to raise the, um, um, is to look for equity partners. Uh, we already have some commitment on the equity side and we will first focus on closing 
uh, raising the equity side before we move on to uh, to selling some of the houses. I think we expect to to be breaking down break, break, breaking ground uh, towards the end of the year or early next year. Um, so the focus right now is uh, to close on the equity uh, private placement. Okay, Pauls, and when, when it comes to the constructing of this, uh, are you going to experience some challenges when it comes to electricity generation and ensuring that you are able to put in all the required facilities? We know that this also being one of the biggest issues when it comes to poverty development in the East African region. Okay. I think where the, 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 the property is located has... Uh, sufficiently well developed uh, infrastructure they've got uh, electricity lines perhaps some need to to to, to upgrade the the, the, um, the distribution centers there is water um, so there's adequate water supply um, probably to be supplemented by rainwater harvesting and boreholes uh, and again this is a green project which looks at um, you know, ways of recycling and, 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 and uh, water recycling and water harvesting and, 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 and green ways of conservation. So uh, the infrastructure, I think we are already confident uh, that it will support this kind of development.